Hi folks, Toad to AdvisorDown.com and we are in Portugal for the launch of this, which is the new Triumph Thruxton RS. Uh, it's a new model for 2020, it's kind of taken elements of the uh, Thruxton TFC, which has been announced, which is kind of the ultra limited edition, all the carbon fiber goodies, and it's added them to the Thruxton R, effectively topping out that new range. Uh, just a quick overview of this bike. This is gonna be in dealerships in March, we've been told, possibly at the end of February, but March at the latest. And this is coming in at 13,000 pounds. Just to put that into perspective, if you're thinking about buying a Fuxin R, which is the step down from this, this thing is only about 600 quid more. And as I go through the details, you realize that there is actually quite a lot of extra stuff that you're getting for that, that 600 pounds worth of hard earned cash. So we're just gonna go through the details of the bike um, now so starting off with the engine um, so Triumph have wedged the most powerful 1200 cc parallel twin that they've ever built into this bike um, it's not just the most powerful they've done a lot of work to a get it through the euro 5 emissions regulations and they've also reduced the internal inertia of the engine to make it spin up a little bit more freely I never really thought that the Thruxton R was a very lazy engine. It's got a very usable and a very good natured character, but I never really thought it was lazy. And this definitely feels more lively when you're riding it out on the road. It really, really does rush up into the, into the red line of the rev range uh, quite quickly. Talking about the rev range, actually, they've also increased the red line on this by 500 RPM, which is mightily handy because more revs equal more fun, power and everything else. So that's all good as well. Um, out on the roads today, it was typical Portuguese launch material. So there was a little bit of dual carriageway to start off with and then we're straight into the uh, really, really nice uh, twisty roads running up the mountain um, where we were actually about a year ago on the launch of the Scrambler 1200 and the roads are absolutely pucker. And going around the hairpin after hairpin, you can either ride it two ways. You can dance all up and down the box like Michael Flatley or you can just be really, really lazy with it and just sit the bike in the fat part of the torque curve and just use all of that torque and all of that power to drive out the corner. Um, it's a very, very tractable unit and um, it's just entertaining to ride. It's got a lovely engine note, it's got a lovely character to it and it really suits the kind of the cafe racer aesthetic and the kind of the cafe racer style that this thing's going for. Um, another good point to mention while we're talking about the engine is the gearbox because I still lament that the uh, six-speed box in all of the 1200cc parallel twin uh, Triumph engines is probably the best, one of the best gearboxes on two wheels for me. It just feels really positive, it's got nice feedback and don't really get any false neutrals or anything like that and you can clutch the shift up and down the box without a problem at all. Properly, properly good. Uh, another point to make on the gearbox is that Triumph have uh, this brought out a new clutch for this one. So this is a, a much lighter clutch than the previous model, the R. Um, it's got a, a lighter feel at the clutch lever, noticeably. Again, I rode the R version of the Thruxton uh, in the summer last year. Um, and it did get a little bit tiring uh, after what if you're riding it for a long period of time just pulling in that clutch especially if you're in stop start city riding and this is a much much lighter clutch which is all good because the cafe racer sort of seat in position and the ergonomics of it you don't really want any extra stress on your wrist so that's properly properly good so talking about the suspension, there's not really a lot of new stuff that we can talk about. We've got the same rear shock absorbers, which are the Olin's proprietary shocks that were fitted to the Thruxton R, and we've got Showa separate function big piston forks. Out on the roads that we're riding today, it's, it's not what you'd call plush, but it is planted. And it's, it's it, again, it kind of, a cafe racer has got to ride like a cafe racer. It can't just look like one. And this definitely, definitely does that. It's very lively. Um, in terms of the bike kind of is always sort of moving around and shimmying around, not in a, an unnerving way, in a kind of, it feels like it wants to get up and, and go for a ride. And I really, really like that. It's physical as well, it, riding it all day today. We got on the bikes at nine o'clock, finished at about five o'clock and you knew it at the end of the day. It's, it's a properly engaging thing to, to jump on and ride. So again, it kind of all lends itself to the kind of style of the bike and it does make it feel like a proper full-on cafe racer, which is properly cool. So the, 
one of the biggest changes for me and one of the biggest steps up in terms of specification and performance of this model as opposed to the R version is, is the Brembo M50 uh, monoblock calipers that are fitted to it. I always found on the Thruxton R that the brakes felt a bit wooden effectively. You could get power through the lever, but you really had to properly, properly give them a good squeeze and you could never really brake with just two fingers with confidence. You had to properly get a full four-fingered squeeze on the brake lever uh, to get the thing to stop if you were really, really pushing on. And they fitted the M50s, they're the same calipers that are fitted to the Street Triple RS and they are sort of super bike spec brakes and they're really, really very good. And you could trail brake right up into the heart of the corner. And there's a few sketchy moments where we sort of came up against slower traffic on the route today and you're really, really thankful of the braking setup that this bike has got. Um, it works faultlessly. The, the ABS isn't switchable, so you can't turn it off, but to be honest with you, only really felt it cutting in on the back wheel as you were sort of breaking down into some corners where the surface was less than optimal. Uh, equipment wise it is a cafe racer so there's no TFT which is great because I think this bike needs a proper analog rev counter and speedo. Um, we've got a couple of trips, you've got range to empty, you've got odometer, od uh, so you've got your odometer. Um, there really isn't much else. They have updated the riding modes for this bike, so they've been prioritised for the RS version. So you've got rain, road and sport and you can turn off the traction control as well which is good if you want to pop some wheelies. On that note, it will wheelie on the throttle at the slightest whiff of a flick of your wrist. It is really, really happy to just lift the front. Um, so if you're gonna turn the traction control off, just keep an eye on that if you're not up for pulling wheelies. Um, Triumph have also done a lot of work to improve the throttle connection. So going from a closed throttle to an open throttle, um, Again, it's, it's, it's a little thing, but it adds up to make the bike a much more enjoyable thing to ride. It's noticeable that it is smoother. I mean, it's a big parallel twin, so there's always going to be an element of a, a bit of a kick in the back as you open the throttle, but it is noticeably smoother than the R version that I rode in the summer this year. I like the way that it's got proper, authentic cafe racer handling, styling and sound because if you're going to have a cafe racer you can't have a bike that just looks like a cafe racer but doesn't feel like one, doesn't sound like one and doesn't ride like one so they've ticked all the boxes on that front. I love the fact that they've updated the brakes, it was one of the only things that I didn't like about the pre didn't like, I don't want to say that, it was one of the only things that let down the Thruxton R was the front brake on it with that wooden sensation when you when you pulled the lever, they've updated that these are, you know, brakes that are now on comparison with most of the super bikes that are out there which is cool um, and the engine i still think this is one of the coolest one of the most enjoyable and one of the most rewarding engines that's you know in any of the thruxton range it's just great fun to ride it's got so much torque kind of everywhere that you need it there's only a little sort of flat spot around 4000 rpm and that's purely been done just to get it through the euro 5 regulations other than that it's an absolute peach so what we don't like, and I've only really got one thing that I don't like about it, and that's uh, the riding position and the cafe racer clip-ons that are fitted to it makes it a little bit risky, especially if you're really, really pushing on and using the extra power that you've got through the front brakes, you'll find yourself kind of having to shake your wrists out every now and again. Not a massive issue because you know exactly what you're getting into when you buy a bike with these kind of ergonomics and these kind of handlebars, so not a big issue to be honest with you. I mean, you look at what you're getting with this bike, the complete package of the brakes, you've got the updated engine, black engine casings, it looks absolutely awesome. And it's only 700 quid more than the Thruxton R. Makes you wonder why you'd buy the R, really. I don't think I would. You can pay out 700 quid and buy all those bits and fit them to your R. It's just, it's just a, a more complete, uh, it's a more focused package than the R. Um, so if you've never ridden a Triumph Thruxton and you're a fan of four-cylinder nakeds and four-cylinder sports bikes, you're probably going to get on it and there will be some things about it that won't quite gel with you or you won't quite gel with it. Give it time because it is a properly, properly enjoyable thing to ride down a decent road on a sunny day. If you've already got a Thruxton R and you're thinking about upgrading, just get yourself down to the dealership and march, take one for a test drive because there is so much more that this bike can do over and above the outgoing model kind of makes the decision if you were thinking of buying one an absolute no-brainer 
We're gonna have a full review on visordown.com. Thanks for your time.